Hello everyone, I'm now going to show you how to use pencils and what they actually do. This is my very own pencil box which I had since the years when I was studying. When I did foundation I got this, this was a long time ago. And when I open this, uh, you will see there are some pencils here that I've never used <laughs> and others I've used a lot or I've even replaced multiple times. Now. They're all different pencils. You see they have a little number, 5H, 4H, 2H, 3H. Okay, they should be in different order, doesn't matter, H. And it goes down, after H comes HB. In fact, there's an F in between, but um, then comes B, and then the Bs go up to 9B all the way. What this number actually tells you is the composition of what is in here, you know, which is your graphite. <laughs> it's a mix of clay and graphite and that differs in all these compositions yeah so um, the more graphite there is the darker is the line but the softer it is so it's the more graphite there is the higher the B you know and B stands for bald it's a good way to memorize this and H which you could say stands for A for hard yeah because this is very hard has a lot of clay in it and less graphite yeah so these pencils here will create different lines because this is harder than that one and i'll give you a little demonstration yeah so we're starting with the pencil now which is the 5h yeah so 5h will make you a nice thin line yeah and then there's a 4h And we've got our 3H. And the 2H. I'm going to skip now a little bit and go to the Bs to give you a bit of a... So this is already a 2B. And 3B should be a little bit. Okay, and now a big step, let's say, let's do a 70. Oops. Yeah, you see how this varies, yeah? And what's important to understand is, this one smudges a lot, can you see that? And obviously you can erase this very well as well, yeah? Because it doesn't penetrate the paper so much, yeah? But this one, I've got dirty fingers now, but this one doesn't smudge that much. I mean, it smudges a bit, but um, it makes a much finer line. It smudges less. This is great when you do, let's say, a draft drawing uh, before you want to do a painting. Yeah, you do a very fine drawing. Or so you pick something where the, the clay and the graphite is in balance, something around um, an HB, sort of in the middle. Yeah, this is great to to represent um, just some lines and you can later on erase them easily. And um, let's say you do an architectural drawing or a design drawing for something that you want to build um, and the lines have to be very, very precise, then you use, let's say, a 5H. Yeah? I'm more of an artistic type. I studied art, so as a result, I use these because these allow you to do a real mess and I really like that. Yeah, So you can start to explore how you use the individual pencil now to do some shading with it. So let's stick to our 7B. In fact, let's not do that because the mine broke. <laughs> let's take a 6B. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> you see if I'm holding it at a, at a narrow angle, I can do some really nice grayscale with this. I can start to smudge it and create beautiful tonal background in which I can do some line works as well. Yeah, so this is quite interesting as a material. You wouldn't be able to do that with, let's say, uh, a 5H. But you you can get it. I mean, you can do it, but it takes much longer. Yeah, okay, whilst I'm doing now this, I will now increase the pressure. And you see how it gets darker, yeah? Whoops. Uh. 
Yeah? So you can create also a sense of tonality, you know, going from one to the other. In the other way, if you want it to fade out to nothing. What I'm doing is I'm just changing the, ang the angle of the pencil slightly whilst I'm doing that. There's lots of different ways of holding the pencil. I'm holding it like this. Um, other people hold it like that, you know. So this is an overhand drawing technique. And this is a different technique. You, you will need to find out what works best for you. There's no right or wrong, yeah? Um, this one, this overhand technique is good if you want to do some quick drafting, whatever. But um, this is, you can be much more precise if you hold the pencil like you would hold a pen, yeah? So um, these are different different pencils. And as I said, I really like the, the high Bs because I can work from very light, sorry, very light. And okay, this one is breaking too. Excellent. <laughs> Let's pick another one. <laughs> Let's pick a 3D. And by increasing, I can make this really, really solidly black. You see how this here, this black from a high B, or this was even a medium B, is much darker than this here, which was from an F. Yeah? Although I've really worked as hard as possible. I can, of course, try to continue working into this now to make it darker. Yeah? So you can combine these pencils as well and play to your heart's content. I'm gonna show you next how to do some shading uh, to give this impression of 3D effects, which of course you want to achieve when you make a nice drawing of let's say a glass or a bottle or of a garment or whatever you're drawing, right? So I'm gonna take a very, very simple shape, just uh, let's say uh, a sphere, yeah? And I'm going to draw it slightly wobbly. Okay, here we go, here's our circle. Now let's try to make this look 3D. So the first way of um, shading this would be to make it tonal, which means I'm imagining where the light comes from, let's say from here, yeah? And I am just adding to it the lines to give it this impression that it is a 3D object with a light reflex on it. And by pressing harder on the pencil, see how it gets darker? Yeah. By pressing harder, I can really give the illusion that it does sit there on the paper, especially if I then give a bit of a Reflect or reflection or something on the paper as well. And I can, if it's a soft pencil, I can smudge as well. Yeah. Like this, and I can start to erase into it. So this would be tonal. Yeah. So tonal shading. Yeah. And it's a very nice thing to do with a soft pencil, I recommend something like a 3B or anything higher up to, let's say, 6B or something. It's really nice to do that, yeah? So, yeah, so here's your tonal. Then the next thing we have is hatching. So hatching is basi basically a technique um, that was developed in, I believe, the Middle Ages, and it is putting parallel lines up, yeah? So this is called hatching, yeah? So say I'm having an object, again, my sphere, and I want to give the effect of hatching, yeah? Um, then I can just... Uh, 
add to it. And it's commonly used in graphics and in print techniques, you know, and it kind of It's a very simple way of representing uh, volume. Now the interesting thing about hatching is that you can actually use it in different ways. So here's your hatching. You can do the single hatching or you can do cross hatching which would be lines meeting at different angles. Yeah and that gives you of course That gives you, of course, the option of selecting areas in which you give more darkness. You see, it becomes more effective, right? You could even do a third direction in there. Yeah. And then finally, there's another hatching technique, and it is called contour hatching. And that's very simple, and it is actually an excellent way of representing volume, much more than these. Because after all, this still looks kind of flat and graphic, because there are lines that don't really follow the contours of the object. But if you imagine you have a sphere, and you would, let's say, put strings around it, they would never look like that. They would actually come around like this, right? Or like that. Yeah, and that would be contour hatching. If you do your line work, the hatching along the contours of the object. Yeah, it is still line work, opposed to the tonal work here, which was really about creating a surface. We're still having line work. And you can do it also much more graphic if you say, oh, I don't want to have that many lines I want to actually just have a few lines you know and and that way you you can give an impression as well you can combine the techniques you know this is now cross hatching normal contour hatching combined you can of course also do some tonal hatching into it. It's a tonal, not hatching, tonal work into it. It's much it. Yeah. It's all up to you to experiment. Yeah? So much for that.